Hi Jan, uh, you're watching Axe Photography with me, uh, Daniel. Uh, so I was thinking of making a update of uh, the status of my. Uh, actually, it's a uh, summer uh, service uh, period for me because uh, I'm living on the 59th degree north, so it's too bright uh, to be photographing. So usually during the summer. Uh, I am making some upgrades. Um, you probably have seen my video of uh, changing my focuser on my telescope. Um, I have also uh, been uh, measuring the backlash on my old focuser, but since I have exchanged to, um, actually it's the same focuser, but it's a shorter draw tube. The old draw tube was 3.5 inches and the new draw tube is 1.5 inches making the whole camera train uh, closer to the telescope um, I was seeing some uh, some tilt uh, because of the weight of the camera train so um, uh, I'm going to measure the backlash of the new focuser body um, my old feather touch focuser had a backlash of approximately um, uh, 40 uh, thousands of a millimeter somewhere around 40 steps so I'm going to measure um, on the the new focuser body as well and I will uh, show you how to do that during the summer it's a period of me um, fiddling with some new um, gear so this is a uh, box that I have been fiddling with it's an Arduino connected to, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a um, uh, infrared sensor. Uh, it's a MLX 9614, I believe it's called, to measure the uh, cloud temperature. Uh, it's based on a Arduino and it will speak ASCOM with my computer. It will be able to tell if it's uh, cloudy or if it starts to rain, it will be measuring the wind speed and the wind direction as well. Um, so this is what I'm going to uh, work with for the upcoming weeks. But today I am going to show you how to measure the backlash of a focuser. Okay, so let's connect the focuser and let's uh, get it on with the calibration routine. So first of all, uh, I want to recalibrate the um, movement of the focuser. So the first step in the calibration wizard is to uh, run the focuser or the draw tube to the innermost position. And you can see me walking back and forth to the uh, telescope here, uh, just double checking how close I can get, because this is a manual operation and the, the program doesn't know where the draw tube is uh, in this state of the calibration wizard. Uh, so you really want to check uh, that you don't hit the focuser body, but as close as possible. When you're happy, you just click the next button and we're on to step three. Uh, which is uh, racking out the draw tube to the outermost position. So you can see it here, uh, moving out. And this is exactly the same procedure as uh, when you are uh, calibrating the innermost position. You want to get as close as possible um, to the outermost position. And you can see me here walking back and forth to the telescope uh, just want to nail it uh, as far out as possible uh, the draw tube is one and a half inch long um, actually about 
38 millimeters uh, and just want to get as close as possible to that mark without the draw tube hitting the um, the edge um, when you are happy with that you just click the next button and the whistle will tell you well great success you have now calibrated the focuser so with nothing more to it uh, it's really easy and straightforward after the calibration I usually do a go to command um, in this case I believe the uh, draw tube have a uh, maximum outmost position of uh, 51,500 something like that and the innermost position is obviously zero um, I have focus uh, somewhere around 45,000 steps so uh, I'm fairly uh, a bit out in the focus but uh, this is how I try the go to commands so let's move forward to the next calibration with uh, which this video is uh, basically the, the key feature um, how to measure the backlash uh, of your focuser and this is uh, applicable to all kinds of focuser when you want to uh, make an autofocus routine in the computer it uh, is best um, performance is uh, telling the driver which amount of backlash it has so you can see me here I have set up a dial gauge um, it is uh, able to measure 100 of a millimeter so I am starting out with small steps first to see if there are any movement uh, in the focuser so 10 steps was uh, no movement at all and I am working my way up you can see me going back and forth to the telescope uh, even here to check if the gauge has moved okay so you can see now the the dial moved up a bit here uh, when hitting 60 steps so that is a too big number for me so um, basically uh, I have to decrease this and it's it's a matter of taking your time going back and forth uh, moving uh, to smaller steps bigger steps and learning the focuser so for me uh, I was able to measure the least movement with 15 steps so that is what I uh, wrote into the driver software so it knows its backlash is 15 steps so that's basically it. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it and you will get notified when I have uploaded some new videos.